Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Olivier Roy, who is a well-known expert on political Islam. He's currently a professor of political science at the European University Institute in Florence, Italy. Thank you for uh, being on the show. Uh, you are just uh, publishing a book in France. Uh, I would translate it roughly as uh, looking for the lost Orient uh, because you are uh, not a traditional academic. You started uh, traveling to Afghanistan and then uh, through all the Muslim world for in the late uh, 1960s when you were still a student. Uh, at the time, you were a leftist uh, militant and you've always uh, mixed uh, theory and very practical work uh, on the ground. Uh, in 1992, uh, you wrote a book uh, titled The Death of Political Islam. Uh, more than 20 years later, with all what we've seen happening, Al-Qaeda, mm. uh, mm. the Arab Springs, the rise mm. of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, do you still believe that political Islam is dead? Yeah, not Islam in politics, of course, but political Islam as a political ideology is dead. Is that simply because it doesn't work, you know? The concept of an Islamic state never works. Uh, it doesn't work in Iran. We have the most secular society now in Iran, if we compare uh, with 30 years ago. It doesn't work in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is not an Islamic state because there is a monarchy. And it didn't work uh, in Tunisia and Egypt during the time, uh, uh, one year ago, uh, when the uh, Islamists were in charge. You know, uh, They have been elected. They won the election. So in this sense, uh, uh, it's not the failure of the Islamist parties, but it's a failure of their political project. They have been totally unable, for different reasons, to do anything uh, uh, about Islam, both in Tunisia and in Egypt. And now we see in Tunisia uh, that the uh, uh, Nahda party is becoming some sort, I would say, of a Muslim Christian democracy, if you can say that. It's a conservative party, for sure, uh, but they accept constitution. They even voted for the most secular constitution in all the Middle the list, uh, they lose, they lost the elections, and they just recognize their defeat. Uh, and now uh, they are uh, uh, going to be a democratic opposition party uh, in Tunisia. We have also, of course, uh, the example of uh, uh, Turkey where uh, uh, the uh, AKP is also a conservative, racist party, but a party uh, who uh, respects uh, uh, elections and constitution. But nevertheless, if you look maybe uh, from the West, uh, the Muslim world, there seems to be a lot of people who are attracted by those Islamist parties uh, much more than several years ago. I mean, this cannot be denied. The people who are voting for the Islamist parties now are not people who want an Islamic state, you know. Uh, in Turkey, it's very clear. It's a conservative vote for you? That's it's a very conservative vote. And if we look, for instance, at the uh, decisions taken by Erdogan and the parliament, it's not about Sharia. It's, uh, I would say, they're closer to the uh, US Tea Party than to the uh, Saudi Wahhabi. You know, uh, uh, they are banning alcohol from the, the streets, but they're not banning al alcohol from the country. Are, it's very funny, by the way, to see that in many aspects, they are more looking like uh, Utah, you know, like, Ameri uh, like American Mormons than like uh, Saudi Wahhabis. Like Puritans, that's what you're saying. Uh, I want to go uh, back to uh, Egypt and maybe contrast uh, the situation of the Muslim Brothers to uh, uh, Tunisia, uh, for instance. Uh, obviously, the Muslim Brothers uh, won an election, then there was what can only be called a coup by the military, and now President uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi mm. is uh, strongly in power and cracking down on, on uh, the Muslim brothers. Uh, do you think uh, that they made mistakes or uh, do you feel that, uh, you know, there is clearly a willingness to crush them because their ideas are popular? Uh, for CC, it's a matter of power. You know. uh, uh, its main uh, uh, adversary uh, is 
uh, the, uh, the Brotherhood, the Muslim Brothers, so he wants just to crush them to stay in power. But of course, the political landscape is far more complex than expected in, in Egypt. You don't have the Muslim Brothers versus the army. You have also the Salafis, you know, who uh, for the first time established political parties uh, three years ago, who uh, uh, allied first with the Muslim Brothers, but then with the army and the secularists. We have also a secularist trend, uh, which is not really represented by uh, uh, the regime of uh, General Sisi, because the, genera the regime of General Sisi is not secularist at all. You know, It's neither liberal, of course, uh, nor uh, secularist. So we have a far more complex political landscape, and I would add a far more complex religious landscape. So it's not the Islamist versus the secularist. You know? We have a diversification of uh, the Arab societies, and this di diversification has been, I would say, well illustrated by uh, the, different, the uh, previous uh, electoral campaigns with dozens uh, uh, of political parties uh, uh, of uh, any kind of uh, affiliations. Right. Uh, what changed uh, since you, you wrote uh, this book back in 1992 is, of course, uh, the Al-Qaeda phenomenon, now uh, the organization of the Islamic State known as Daesh. Uh, what do you make of this? This is clearly uh, something that that has emerged and is still very present uh, in the Muslim world, but also in the Western world. In my book, The Failure of Political Islam, I indicated that there will be a contradictory trend. On one hand, uh, we'll have a normal normalization of the Islamist parties, as, as it is happening now in Turkey, in Tunisia. Uh, on the other hand, people, uh, religious people who are disappointed by the failure of political Islam will grow, uh, it's what I said 20 years ago, will go to what I call neo-fundamentalism, which is now Salafism. You know. uh, so I expected you know, uh, an increase of Salafism in the Arab societies. So. Uh, what was, I would not say missing, but not stress uh, in my book was jihadism, the extreme form of Salafism, if, if I can say that. You know. uh, at that time, I witnessed this radicalization only in Afghanistan. Uh, among, uh, of course, uh, 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 volunteers coming from all uh, over the During the, the war against yeah, the Soviet yeah. Union. During the war against the Soviets. So. And now we have this kind of autonomization of the jihadist movements, but these jihadist movements are not rooted you know, in a nation state. You know. uh, these guys are global people, universalists, you know, like I would say former uh, uh, ultra-left militants you know, going from one jihad to the other. They go to Afghanistan, they go to Chechnya, they go to Bosnia, now they are in Iraq, they may go to Yemen, to Somalia, and so they are not embedded in a real Muslim society. Uh, yeah, but I want to get to the emergence of mm. uh, Daesh. Uh, mm. Right now, they've seized mm. uh, a fair amount of uh, territory uh, in, in Syria, but also uh, in Iraq, and uh, the West is trying mm. to uh, crack down uh, on them. How do you explain uh, their emergence, and what is the difference with Al-Qaeda? Daesh, or at least uh, the leadership of Daesh, uh, decided to leave, you know, this kind of uh, 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 virtual uh, uh, community uh, or virtual network that uh, constituted Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda never tried to root itself in a given country just to find a sanctuary in Afghanistan or in Yemen. The, the strength of Al-Qaeda was to be a deterritorialized uh, 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 network of militants, you know. Uh, so you couldn't catch them uh, by a military operation like the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. You know. uh, the only way to catch them was Uh, precisely the drones mm, or uh, 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 commandos and things like that. But uh, the, uh, the drawback of this uh, uh, globalization of Al-Qaeda was that, in fact, Al-Qaeda was not achieving you know, any results, you know, except uh, a terrorist attack uh, here and there. So uh, the Daesh leadership decided to re-territorialize jihad, to create a territory, you know, but not in the framework of a nation state. On the contrary, you know, some sort of uh, uh, a uh, uh, moving uh, territory, or at least I would say a core, you know, uh, 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 caliphate with a moving frontier, you know, uh, which could extend uh, from Morocco to uh, Indonesia. So uh, that was their um, imaginary, if I can say that. But concretely, you know, uh, where did they uh, take roots? They take roots only in 
the territory inhabited by Sunni Arabs you know, in Iraq and Syria. Because uh, since the American intervention in Iraq in 2003, the Sunni Arabs have no state. Uh, uh, they think they are the majority of the Middle East, but in uh, northern Middle East, they have no state. Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq are in the hands of non-Sunni. Uh, uh, and Turkey, of course, is non-Arab. So do you think uh, the key to defeat uh, Daesh is actually in the hands of the Sunni, uh, lots of tribes in, in that mm. area. They are the key to victory much more than airstrikes. Yeah, we have to address the political demands of the local Sunni Arab Sunni population because they have been marginalized, you know, uh, uh, either by the local regimes, uh, 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 the uh, Bashar al-Assad regime, or by uh, Western interventions like in Iraq. So the issue uh, against Daesh is not to bomb Daesh. It may help, but it's not uh, uh, a way to destroy Daesh. The way is precisely to uh, separate, if I can say that, uh, Daesh from uh, the local uh, uh, Sunni population, which is, by the way, more and more uh, uh, under pressure from Daesh. You know, there are more and more so things. you're optimistic in a word that they can be vanquished? Yeah, they have reached the territorial limits, except maybe in Lebanon, because they have reached the limit of the Sunni Arab population in northern uh, Middle East. And now they may be undermined, you know, by a uh, 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 revolt, you know, uh, uh, of uh, the local uh, Sunni Arab population. Okay, Olivier Roy, thank you very much for enlightening us on uh, the Middle East and many issues that you've covered uh, in your academic work. Thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.